Hello, thanks for uh, uh, inviting us to participate. The title of my talk is Using Spent Brewery Grain to Suppress Acid Rock Drainage from Historic Tailings. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Tani Corcutt and Lee Joslin. And although this is pre-recorded, they'll be able, available to answer questions at the end of the presentation. And I'm sure you don't need to be distracted by my talking head during the presentation. So I'm just, so you'll just hear me uh, from here forward as I share our findings. I assume that you've read the abstract and that's what drew you to listen in today. We're basically going to cover four main topics, a bit of ARD suppression background, a look at the site, how we tested the concept of using uh, brewery waste to suppress acid rock drainage, and the test results. Before we get started, we need to understand that ARD formation is analogous to the combustion triangle we all learned in elementary school. Cut off the air, cut off the fuel, cut off the heat, uh, and you don't have a fire. ARD formation is similar. You need pyrite, of course, and air, and an oxidizer, maybe ferric iron, and not fully appreciated in water, and not fully appreciated, acetylthiobacillus feral oxidants. Cut off one or more corners of the ARD tetrahedron, and the ARD kinetics is greatly suppressed. But if you cut off the bacteria corner, you can slow the kinetics of ARD formation by three orders of magnitude. That's a thousand times slower. So if you do nothing in addressing ARD, you're looking at perpetual treatment. But if you do something, anything, cutting off any of the legs of the tetrahedron, you might find yourself on a pathway to maybe walk away. But it's not enough to kill just the bad bacteria which is the main focus of, of our talk, is you need to replace them with good bacteria. With apologies to Jamie Lee Curtis and the folks that make Activia, we think of this as kind of a probiotic pathway to walk away from perpetual ARD treatment. So how do bactericides work? Well, there's, there's two basic uh, forms of bactericides. One, the first one is anionic surfactants. This is sodium oral sulfate. Uh, so, you know, think shampoo. Read, read the label on the back of your shampoo, and this is a big component of it. So, getting down to basics, how can a microbe survive in low pH water down to two pHs of two and three? What has happened is it, it's evolved this oily cloak that keeps the ARD outside the cell, and it uses proton pumps to keep the protoplasm inside uh, circumneutral. The shampoo basically destroys the cloak and the ARD floods in, killing the bug. It basically stews in its own juices and it's really hard to evolve an, an adaptive strategy. Unlike the soap, organic acids just weaken the cell membrane so that the contents leak out, kind of like stabbing someone in an artery. And humic acids generated in the plant root zone at a reclaimed site are a source of bactericides and they sustain the good bugs. So revegetation or vegetation is a, is a gift that just keeps on giving. So organic amendments do work and a lot of these are considered waste. As you'll see, we focus mostly on spent brewery grain or brewery waste, but we've also included some milk and some shampoo cells uh, in our test protocol for comparison. So why use spent brewery grain? This stuff, it looks like soggy granola bar, but it can hold a lot of moisture and it's very difficult to dry it out. And it's got a lot going for it. It's everywhere. And research a decade ago shows it can suppress ARD. It helps to grow plants on mine waste and using it to reclaim mine land helps to further close a, a loop. Um, usually a lot of this stuff gets sent to a landfill. And so when our co-author Tani heard me talk about this uh, during my 2016 uh, presentation in Creed, she thought it was a great concept. And so here we are. Tani's connections on the western slope of Colorado led to the identification of our test site, the Atlas Tailings in Uray, Colorado. 
With the cooperation of landowners, we embarked on collecting preliminary samples for characterization about a year ago. The tailwings only have 3.1 tons of pyritic sulfur per kiloton. That's only 0.31%, which isn't much. But because of the lack of alkalinity, the tailings have a PACE pH of 3.4 and exhibit elevated concentrations of lead with other heavy metals. But the primary actor here is lead. Further about the site, elevation is about 10,700 feet. And if you've ever been up this road, it's just spectacularly beautiful. Uh, so samples were collected in the fall and early winter of 2019. Here's Jeff and Tani, uh, hard at work, uh, collecting the samples for the kinetic cell tests. But Tani had some great help from the students at Uray High School's science program and their teacher, Beth Lakin. Excuse me, you say you need a permission slip from your parents to do what? Well, fortunately, we, we think that there's going to be some future engineers and scientists uh, coming out of this, this experience. So based on for some preliminary lab screening results, which were based on some US Bureau of Mines work and, and, uh, and, other, and other work, we developed a very ambitious suite of kinetic cell test recipes. Most of the cells involve various amounts of brewery waste. Milk, in many instances, we've got some here, uh, and we also had some native soil. But most, of, but most, but not all of the test cells had a vegetative cover that was provided by, the na by a native seed mix planted in a biotic soil medium. Over the space of several days, the mixtures were prepared in Tani's garage lab, and the mixtures were placed in the test units. 20 kinetic cell tests were assembled in Tani's backyard in January of 2020. Initially, they were concerned about the brewery waste attracting the local deer herd, but they seemed to lose interest once the brewery waste was mixed with the tailings. We used a seed mix that was similar to the one that DRMS would be using on the site, but we multiplied it times three just to be on the safe side. Three test cells did not receive seed. The control, uh, the number, uh, number 16, which was a, uh, this, the uh, sodium oral sulfate, and the uh, number 17. However, the plant growth media on the surface may have prevented oxygen exchange, cutting off uh, one leg of the ARD tetrahedron. So what did we measure? Field parameters were pH, ORP, conductivity, temperature, and alkalinity. Al Tani took uh, notes of leachate appearance, and we semi-track the water balance in and out of the cell by measuring month monthly precipitation. Due to the dry weather, she had to add syn synthetic rain to generate leachate. Now this was a pro bono test, and, and Tani submitted two samples uh, of leachate to the Colorado School of Mines for analysis via ICP atomic uh, emission spectroscopy. Her biggest challenge was filtering some of these really high organic content leachates. So let's look at the data. Now I'll be going through this quickly, but you can pause the presentation and take a closer look uh, if you need to at a later time. I know it's a complicated looking slide. And while the pH uh, change for, uh, it could be somewhat mathematically complex, Using raw pH data can be used as an indicator of how steady the pH values were through the test. In many instances, say take uh, samples uh, three through all, all the way through, through 11 uh, and beyond, it took several months for the pH to increase, say uh, from a low of almost four up to uh, pHs around eight. You can see that we've had some overlying, overlapping recipes brewery waste, milk, uh, sodium oral sulfate, and all of the brewery waste cells did as well as the baseline by the fifth month of the test. Baseline is over here. This is the one that has just uh, brewery, just has uh, soil and, um, and vegetation. Interestingly, from a pH perspective, the SLS cells didn't do as well as the brewery waste. 
So here are the field measurements from the July event. There's a lot of data here, but let's first focus on the clear leachate kinetic cell test, which is number three, number 12, and number 19. This suggests that there's very little, uh, you know, very little contamination in, in the discharge. Now, note that they all have consistently very low conductivity values. There's 98, 198, 94 uh, millisiemens per centimeter. They have circumneutral pHs and modest alkalinity increases. Again, you can look at the data more closely at your leisure if you download the presentation. Now, the clear uh, leachate cells compare favorably to the control plus the vegetation, which is number two. But let's look at the ICP metals and the sulfate for these cells. Here's where the distinctions start to emerge. Two controls, number one and two, released a lot of uh, lead at startup. So, and so did the low uh, brewery waste cells, number 13, 14, and 15, and the SLS cells. So this is uh, indicative of, you know, very labile uh, lead concentrations. So most of the Bury waste cells, with the exception of the 5% organic carbon cell, uh, released very little lead at startup. Number three is looking really good. With the low lead, low sulfate, and low iron, virtually, uh, which is virtually zero pyrite oxidation. Now number six is also looking, is not far behind, but the conductivity is a little bit higher, and so we have weak T versus clear leachate. Now unfortunately, uh, when Tani started off with 20, 95 syringe filters, but it took about five filters per vial to provide a 15 mil sample, uh, for this July sampling event, and she ran out of filters. So the control wasn't sampled. But the control was very probably similar to number 16, which also exhibited an orange leachate. Lastly, let's look at the oxidation reduction potential. Low numbers are good in green, and high numbers in red are bad. When we look at our four potential favorites, none of them have really exhibited low ORPs, which would be indicative of very anoxic conditions. Recall that low ORP is coincidental to high conductivity, which is strong to black tea and high lead, sulfate, and iron. Let's back up and see that. So these are all the cells with very low uh, ORPs and high lead concentrations. So we've got some potential winners here. These are numbers three and six, which had the lowest brewery waste amounts among their respective clusters. This goes to show that you could have too much of a good thing, either brewery waste or milk, and it may not be appropriate in all situations. If there for example, if there were more pyrite present in the atlas tailings, maybe some other mixtures would have been better. Many thanks to our collaborators. And make sure to check out the Colorado Boy Brewery the next time you're in Silverton. Thanks for your attention. I hope your mind is a little bit more prepared now, especially now as you down your next beer. So cheers. And I'm gonna open this up for questions, but just to get things started, uh, does anyone in the audience know the connection that Louis Pasteur had with beer? Sorry, no prizes except bragging rights. Again, thank you very much for your attention and look forward to questions.